Why, hello there. I'm Sandy Allock. I'm an artist and I work in a lot of different mediums. Today it's going to be ink because I got this lovely little care package from Ferris Wheel Press. They reached out to me a few weeks back on Instagram and asked if I'd consider being part of their team as an affiliate and a promoter of their inks. And they just have lovely inks. I think their bottles are gorgeous. Their design is gorgeous. Their boxes are gorgeous for their products. Their website is gorgeous. It's just something that really resonates with me. And when they asked, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I got three bottles of ink to play with. And I'm going to be doing that today. I'm going to swatch all of the inks, show you a little bit about how I swatch when I get a fountain pen ink in the studio. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. And then I'm going to do like a piece of, I'm going to call it Rorschach art. So I wanted to test some properties in one of the inks and we're going to see if I can make a painting out of it. I'll let you be the judge at the end if it came out. Okay, let's get started. Let's begin by swatching the colors. I do this with all of my fountain pen inks, whether I'm going to just put them in a pen and write with them or if I'm going to paint with them. This one's called Sherry Sonata, and it has kind of a brick color that goes out to a very pale pink when it's watered out. But the bottles themselves are just gorgeous. I think they're really, really pretty and well designed. And they have hexagon lids. I mean, who has hexagon lids? Is that perfect for me or what? So the second one here, the tiny bottle, is Knitted Nettle. And what I'd recommend is going to their website and just check out all of their stories behind these because they, they have like little fairy tale stories behind all the colors. It's just, it's very sweet. So this one is called Aurorealis, like Aurora Borealis without the boar. And it's a very pretty purple color. I'm going to be working mostly with that in the art piece that's going to be in the um, second part of this video. Lovely design on the bottle, of course. So I'm propping up my board because I want these to run at an angle. Every time I swatch these inks, I put down water. I put the ink at the top, let it run down because I want to see what the color changes to be. Some of them, like just as they get thinner, they change into a completely different color. Some of them are just a paler version of the original. And it's helpful to know if you're going to paint with them and just do a light wash of something, what will that light wash be? And while this one looks like a brick, it actually turns into a very, very pale pink when it's very watered out. And I'll show you a snippet of my next video, which is going to focus on that pale pink. And uh, that will be coming up on Saturday. So I'm going to just take some of the excess liquid from the bottom here, soak that up so it doesn't run down, and move on to knitted nettle and put the water on there. Knitted nettle, remember, is the turquoise one. And I'm going to paint that into the top section, let it run and see what that turns into. Now, I also like to know a little bit about how much, um, how dark these colors get when they're really, really dark. I will do some writing over top of this so I can see on my swatches what the full range of the color is, because since I'm painting this into wet paper, I'm not getting a full dark at the very top edge, but you'll see why I don't do usually a very top, um, that top swatch without the water first, except for what I just did with Aurorealis. And that kind of messed up what you'll see later in my swatch because I kind of like to have a little bit lighter color at the top for a reason. I always test out what my inks will do with bleach. And that little thing where I had to add the water later is why my next step doesn't really work all that well. But I left it anyway because I'm not one to waste a swatch of paper. So paint out a little bit at the bottom so the water keeps moving. And then I'm going to dry it all completely and move on to the next phase. And the next phase is going to be testing to see what will lift these inks. Now there are some inks that are permanent and waterproof and nothing will lift from them. 
if they are not waterproof, then we're going to get some water droplets that are going to lift. And so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of water on each one and let it sit there for a second or two or longer. <clears throat> and then I'm going to see if it lifts up because that's going to tell me whether I can use some water techniques to do that with. And how bright is it? Is it going to lift just a little bit or is it going to lift a lot? And the Sherry Sonata and the Aurorealis lift wonderfully, but the Knitted Nettle doesn't do all that much lifting, just very, very small amount. So it's not one that's going to, to work with lifting techniques. Now this is bleach, just regular old Clorox laundry bleach. Nothing special about it, just using a pipette to put a little bit of it onto each one of these pieces. Let it sit there for a second. And some inks react with it and some inks don't. And again, it's helpful to see what happens. Now with both the Sherry Sonata and the Knitted Nettle, it does lift. So I definitely get some lift to it, a little less with the Knitted Nettle, but I got a bluish color when I got to the Aurorealis. And that one I wanted to explore more, which is why in the second part of this video, I decided to use that color. So what I'm doing here is using bleach in a little bowl and a glass pen to dip into it to write the names into the area at the top. And that was why I try not to have the color too solid on here, just because it makes the bleach react better if it's not kind of trying to bore through super thick ink. And if the lifting is not all that great, then you can't really see that. So then I have to write it with a pen. But the knitted nettle kind of didn't show up anything. And the Aurora Aurorealis is just kind of struggling because it had that ink that went straight onto the paper. It didn't have any water to mitigate it. But then I take a regular dip pen and I just do some scribbling over top of the color so I can see what that color of ink looks like when I just draw with it or if I'm going to write with it. I want to know what color that is and how dark it is. And does it show up if I have a wash of something underneath of it? And that is how I create all of mine. I have a whole book full of all of my ink swatches that have these kind of tests to them. And everything's done fairly consistently. So I always have some water lifting and that sort of thing. Aurorealis has that shimmer I mentioned, and I'll try to get a better look at it later at the end of this piece. But now on to the crazy Rorschach art. And it's not going to be a folded in half sheet like true Rorschach, but I'm just going to splatter some water onto my paper and start to see what happens when I drip some color into it. So I just dipped my brush into the bottle itself to grab just a whole bunch of ink and throw it in here. Probably a little much ink. Ink is like more potent, I guess, than watercolor. So if you're new to working with inks and trying to paint with them, you don't need nearly as much as you would with watercolor. You can see it's just kind of a crazy amount of pigment here. You might love that, which would be great, but it also could be a little bit much. So just remember your fountain inks are going to be more pigmented, so you want to be a little more gingerly when you add color to them. But I wanted enough color in here because what I wanted to add in here was bleach. Before I had tested the wet bleach on dry paper, and here I wanted to see what would happen when it's bleach dropped into wet color that's still moving. And boy, was that exciting to see that blue just pop out of there. And I wanted to turn this into something. I didn't know what it was going to be, you know, Rorschach style, and just kind of let the color do what it's going to do, and then dried it. And I kept turning it different ways, different directions while I was drying it to try to see what I saw in it. You know, was it going to be a vertical painting? Was it going to be horizontal? Did I see a face in it? Are there flowers? You know, what exactly? And maybe you can guess and see what you see in there. What I ended up painting was a bunch of grapes. Maybe I had purple on the brain and figured that that would work, but I saw a few round shapes. And I think that was maybe where it really did start. Whenever I get to the highlight sides where there's white, I can 
just draw my lines around it. So it looks like if I were to have drawn the pen lines first and then inked it with the color, then it looks like I stopped nice and short and left myself whites. But here, since I'm doing the pen work afterward, I can just kind of leave those whites and make it look like I'm magic. Um, if I were to try to paint this after doing the line drawing, all those lines would disappear because this is not waterproof ink. So I've shaken up the bottle so that as I add more of the purple, I want more of the darker, thicker, richer color in there so that I can try to get some of that shimmer. So I had it shaken up again to make sure that if there's any opportunity to get some shimmer, then that will show up because generally my experience with inks and paints that have shimmer in them, you have to have enough pigment for it to really shimmer. Because if it's just a bare minimum amount, you don't get much shine at all. And for the most part, with most things, you don't see the shimmer unless you turn the thing sideways. So it's really hard to get pictures of. I decided I wanted to put a shadow underneath of it, maybe make these grapes sit on a table of some kind. And this whole time, I had no idea really where this was headed. I wasn't sure if it was going to work out or if this was just going to be an experiment to have fun with and, and play around with. Dropped in a little more bleach here and there, added in some more ink here and there, just kind of playing around. I wanted to watch the color move and see what I could make out of it. At the bottom section, I just kind of let it run and painted right over some of the grapes to darken them so that they're in shadow and then dried the whole section so that it would stop moving for a while and I could stop and breathe and think, okay, what do I want to do to it next? And um, when the paper is completely flat, this is cold press arches watercolor paper, it's completely flat, then it's completely dry. So now I want to go in and add you know, some of the lines that washed away earlier, I want to add them back in and I want to put a little bit more color in some of the shadow areas. So instead of dipping the brush into the ink and putting a ton of it in there, I decided to just scribble a little bit and then use some water and a small brush to move it around so I can get smaller sections because I got a little bit carried away earlier. That was not necessarily the best idea. But then moved over to the bottom section, just added more darks, more definition of some of the grapes. And you can see there's some texture in the, the purple. Some of that is because I sprayed it. I didn't get that part on camera, but I took a spritzer and just sprayed the whole thing. Because remember, we get some lift out of that. So you can add really interesting textures when the ink is one that lifts. And Aurorealis is one that does. So it is quite lovely. I went in with a brush and just water, clean water, so I could add in some texture into specific grapes and lift some specific color. I was testing to see if I could lift it out of the bleached out color too, or did it only lift from the purple? And then I added some purple into the uh, some of the areas that I wanted to add darks in and then used a brush that just had some water on it to move that color around just get some interesting texture out of it. At the beginning of this video, I said I would let you be the judge of whether or not I turned my Rorschach blob into something reasonable. And this almost looks like maybe it was planned, even if not completely, because I think it kind of looks like the blob fits. The adaptations with all the different textures and things, I think really helped. And having the two tones in it made a huge difference because they look like they're glowing. There's one that looks like it's just reflecting off the table surface, which is fun. I might want to play with that some more. So keep an eye on my social media if you want to see more playtime with this ink and maybe some of the others as well. I did try, as I said, to get a little clip of the shimmer. It's a goldish shimmer. You can't really see it much on camera. Sorry about that, but it is quite pretty. And there is my finished painting. Now you can get 10% off at Ferris Wheel Press using my last name, Allnock, for your coupon code. So go shopping. You can buy anything with that 10% off, not just these three colors, but I will link my three colors in the doobly-doo. And uh, on Saturday, 
I'm going to be back with more. I'm going to test out all three inks in one painting. And it's going to be this lovely flamingo. And you'll see how I worked out playing with the different colors to mix them and layer them to turn them into something. So I will see you again Saturday. Take care. Share this video with somebody who likes inks because, you know, who doesn't need 10% off? I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.